Now on Talking Solutions, welcoming back Sonia Anderson with Anson. Thank you for having me back. Well, it is Financial Literacy Month, so who am I going to call? Anson. For the people who aren't familiar, can you tell us about your 501c3 charity? Yeah, Anson was founded in 2009 and we started providing services in early 2010. So the main focus is our financial literacy curriculum. And along with that, we have the piggy bank program that teaches children how to save. We have five piggy banks right now, and those students have saved almost $275,000 in those little piggy bank accounts. Whoa. And in addition, we have our homework help and tutoring program. So we started financial literacy and then we realized that there was a need for academic intervention. So we added that. Together, it satisfies our mission, empowering through education. And Sonia, when I'm asked to explain what Anson is all about... I see you work a great deal with Clark County School District to help educate our kids about finances because it's so important. And I was thinking about how people in their 30s, sometimes in their 40s and beyond, realize that they don't have what they need as far as setting up and planning for their future, retirement savings, things like that. And they realize, I never learned about finances. Well, that's one of the things, you know, in all of the schools that we teach financial literacy, teachers, when we are in the classroom, tell us they wish they had this when they were growing up. Financial literacy is a learned habit. Financial literacy education is just as important as reading and writing because we all need the skill for life as a teenager, as a young adult, as, you know, older adults, as senior citizens. It's all about managing your finances. And unfortunately, that's not one of the main focuses in our early education. Hansen is founded on my life story. I came from a very, very, very poor upbringing, rural third world country, no running water, no electricity, six out of eight kids from parents who did not have any education at all. My parents used thumbprints because they didn't even know how to sign their names. But with the help of total strangers, I was able to get a good education in Excel and eventually help my whole family to where now my nieces and nephews in their 30s have PhDs. And this is two generations ago when we came from families that were illiterate. And along the way, because we were so poor, budgeting was very, very necessary. You know, when my mom made 11 to $13 a week, and she had to support eight kids with that and made sure that we had bus fare to go to school, that was serious budgeting skills. So I learned that very, very early. I took over the family finances at eight years old, because my mom didn't know how to read or write or count money. So I did it. And with that, you know, it was ingrained in me that you have to have a solid budgeting background and discipline. So coming over here, here, I became very successful with the help of total strangers who taught me how to apply for scholarships. I went to college here on scholarships and then had a very, very successful business. But it was always in the back of my mind, had total strangers not helped me, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. So I sold my business in 2008 and 2009. I took the uh, proceeds from the business and started this organization to teach students and to teach them very, very young as I was to help them break that generational cycle. I broke the generational cycle for my family. And every child's life that we impact, we impact the entire family. So through Anson, the charity, you're giving back. Absolutely. And we're all over the county. We've served over 68,000 students just in the seven years that we've been around. And every one of those students and their families are in a better place because we brought something to them that was not otherwise available. It is Financial Literacy Month. Sonia Anderson is here with us from the 501c3 charity that she founded called Anson. I know you work a lot with CCSD, but you actually have expanded out and reached out to other groups, boys and girls clubs, things like that. We partner with so many other nonprofit and community service organizations across the county, and that's what has enabled us to be able to reach so many students with our homework help and tutoring program. We partner with the Clark County Las Vegas Libraries. We're in 11 of their libraries. We partner with St. Jude's. We provide services at St. Jude's Ranch, not only for the students out in Boulder City, but for their transitional students at the crossings. These are young adult students that we're giving them the basic life skills that they need because, you know, coming from foster care and and going through all of that, a lot of this is missed. We also have spread out outside of Clark County School District. We are in Lincoln County School District also. So we are teaching financial literacy at Paranagath Elementary School and Peoch. Our program is unique. It's the only program of its kind in the country with our piggy bank program tied in with our financial literacy lessons. There are a lot of other organizations that teaches financial literacy, but to come in one day a year or twice a year, that's 
not enough. Our program is the only one that goes throughout the entire school year. We start when school starts, we end when school ends. And because of that, we've won several national awards. And through our national awards, our national recognition, daily we get requests from school districts all over the country and Canada for us to help them develop financial literacy program there or for us to take our curriculum there. So we've expanded for several years. We've been in Texas, just outside San Antonio and New Braunfels, a school district there, Kamal Independent School District. And most recently, we went to Jonesboro, Arkansas, Glendale, Arizona, and we're working with the El Monte School District in Los Angeles to help them implement a program there. Wow. You guys are spreading. Plus, with Canada, you're now an international organization. Could you have dreamed this back in 2009 when you started the charity? No, I sold my business and I thought I was going to retire and I'm going to start this nonprofit that, you know, it'll take a little bit of my time here and there and I'll travel all over the world. I've never worked as many (laughs) hours before in my business as I do now, but this is the most fulfillment that I've gotten. The proudest thing that I've done in my life is what we do now. So although, you know, some days I question my sanity when I walk into a classroom and I know that had we not taken the time to care, then these students would never be exposed to the type of knowledge that we're implementing. I love the idea of Anson and I'd like for people who are listening to us today to understand that you offer these financial education services to kids and schools, but it's not costing them anything. Oh, no, no. All of our services, including our homework help and tutoring, which we all know that that could be up to, you know, $100 an hour or more. And our programs are all free of cost to the families we serve. And that's done by fundraising and grants. And it's it's a difficult job to raise money to provide these programs. And having owned my own business and being a philanthropist for 30 years, I was on the other side of it. I always gave money. And now I'm in a side where we have to apply for grants and we do fundraising events. And those are what supports us and our programs. We have three signature events that we do throughout the year. One of them was the breakfast that was held in March, which is very, very successful. And we themed that do the math because we did the math and our math comes up that it cost us just $50 to serve a child for an entire school year. Our budget is about $1.5 million and we serve about 15,000 students and two programs that comes up about $50 a program a child for an entire school year. And then we have our golf tournament that's coming up in June, which is our biggest fundraising event. You don't have to be a golfer to participate because we have the helicopter ball drop that goes with it. So for $10, you can buy a ball and have a chance to win half of the money of all the sales from the ball drop. And over the last four years, that's averaged out to be about $3,000, the half that the winner gets. So come out and play at the beautiful, exclusive, private Southern Highlands Golf Club or the helicopter ball drop. And you don't have to be there. You don't have to be present to win the helicopter ball drop. We video it and we put it on YouTube. Well, participating in a virtual way, you can be involved in all kinds of stuff. Absolutely. And I just saw the flyer about your golf tournament come across my desk the other day. Is it called Driving Through Education? Driving Education Golf Tournament, yes. We will have, as always, the links all the information on our Talking Solutions Facebook page, along with the podcast of our discussion today. It is Anson. It is Financial Literacy Month during April. And Anson is dedicated to teaching kids the things everybody should know, but in many cases don't. You know, we have underserved families, or we call them at-risk students in Clark County. Every child wants to succeed. Every parent wants their child to succeed. But the skills are not there, and the time is not there. The families that we serve are service worker families. And the evenings when they should be home helping their kids with the homework, they have to work because we are a service industry. We're a tourist community. So they're at work, and the students are home. And then the other challenging thing is that most of those parents are not equipped to provide the necessary help that the students need. So our homework help and tutoring program, our tutors are Clark County teachers that we hire after school. The teachers are familiar with what the students need to learn, how to teach it, and then they're able to give that individualized one-on-one attention, which they cannot give at a classroom. And then with our financial literacy, I mean, these students, a lot of them come from unbanked families. So when we tie that in with our piggy bank program and the kids get to actually have a savings account that they deposit, we simulated a whole banking experience. They have a deposit book, they 
go up to walk up tellers. We have a coin machine and things that they do not get to see because their parents don't go to a bank. So we're teaching the kids and there are all these studies out there that if there is a college savings account, regardless of the dollar amount in it, a child is seven times more likely to go to college. Because if there is an account, then there's discussion about college. If there isn't an account, then parents don't want to bring it up because they don't want to tell their children that we're not going to be able to send you to college because we can't afford it. And then with our financial literacy curriculum, we teach the kids that their parents do not have to come up with the money to pay for your college. There are grants. There are so many scholarships out there. And especially if you are from a lower income family, there are so many programs that you can qualify for. So if we get them to have a solid background, have a solid education, they can score well on their SATs, then there are programs available. And not every child needs to go to a four-year academic college, but every child should have some post-secondary education. I agree. I'm a big fan of community college as well. Absolutely. Those two-year degrees are great. And we have a lot of options out there to continue learning. I've got to believe, Sonia, that the information that kids receive from Anson, your charity, financial education, has got to spread all the way through the family because you referred just a moment ago to the fact that a lot of these, especially lower-income kids, come from households that are non-banking households. They don't have checking and savings accounts. Right. It's not something the kids are exposed to. And even in households, the ones that do have banking accounts, I grew up not knowing what my parents had going on in that area. Yep. So I've got to believe that the financial education and knowledge that you're offering to these kids spreads through the entire family. We ensure that it does because the financial literacy curriculum has a parent engagement part of it. And every child, when they have an in-class financial literacy lesson, they get a homework and we collect all the homework, not to grade it, but to see the parent participation. And so essentially the children are teaching the parents what they learn in the classroom, they're taking it home. That's the idea. And we are so proud to say that we have 82% parent participation in the seven years that we've been providing our programs, which is unheard of. Parents don't have the time, parents don't want to know, but this is such a new experience for the kids that they're excited to talk to their parents about what they learn, needs versus wants, smart spending, different types of expenses. Every third grader that we teach can tell you that there are three different types of expenses, you know, the fixed, the variable, and the periodic. What other third grader would know about a periodic expense unless we teach them? And we're teaching them that. That's just smart education. Now, Sonia, you mentioned that Anson, the charity that you formed in 2009, it is a 501c3. You are dependent on the kindness of others to give the money to make this happen. But the fact that you can get it down to $50 per student to get them through a whole year of financial education, that's not bad work. It's remarkable. And I don't do this by myself. Yes, I invested the money and I founded the organization, but we have a team of remarkable employees. We call them the Anson team. And believe me, they don't do this for the money because every one of them can work somewhere else. You know, a real a for-profit organization or Fortune 500 company, but they choose to do this because they understand my passion and my commitment to it. And when you join the Anson team, you join that passion. And it is a great, great program. In addition to donating money to us to help our programs expand, you can donate your time. You can connect us with someone who can donate money. Volunteers is a big part of our programs because for every volunteer that we have, we don't have to have paid staff. And I believe that children need the reinforcement of our program. You have to put the same person in front of them over and over. Our bank tellers, piggy bank tellers, they're paid staff or volunteers. Silver State School Credit Union, who is our host bank for all of our piggy bank accounts, they have an employee there every week. And then we have the Anson employees. And then we have parent volunteers at our piggy bank program. Every school, the kids get to bank once a week. And those parents are there once a week for an entire school year. I think about the kids that maybe don't have access at this point to Anson. You're telling me that your financial literacy programs are offered through the Clark County School District. You've expanded up into Lincoln County. There's these other states and even Canada as the program grows. But if a parent is listening and they go, gosh, I think that's something I'd really like for my kids to learn. And they are maybe going to school through a charter school or they're being homeschooled, anything. Is there a way they can still be involved with Anson? Absolutely. And our program is scalable. It does not take very much money to get a program into schools. So if parents are listening and want this for their children, which we get that, there is not a day that I don't run into someone new who has heard me on the radio, see me on television, part of our programs or gone to one of our fundraising events or heard me speak somewhere and say, how can we get that? We can get that to that school. All it takes is community involvement. Go talk to the principal 
principal, talk to the PTA Association. How can we raise the minimal funds that it will take to bring a program like this to the school, which will teach every child? Also, anyone can call or email me, Sonia at Anson.org, S-O-N-I-A at Anson.org. Call our office or go on our website and send us an email at info at Anson.org. We'd love to talk. Every conversation we have enforces our program because it spreads the word and it gets community involvement and it takes a community to care. Links and all the information is going to be on the Talking Solutions Facebook page, like always, along with the podcast of our interview. Sonia, you know we always ask with Talking Solutions, what can we do to help you? Just spread the word. The more awareness of our program. And one good thing is that the state is working towards bringing financial literacy. There is legislation that was passed. They are going to bring financial literacy starting in third grade. So it's a step forward. And we are part of the team to help with the curriculum and the requirements. So from all hard work, good things come. Together, we can all make it further. Do you think the kids are having fun learning the things offered up by Anson? That's one of the things my son, who works with us and co founded this organization with me. He says, kids don't get excited about planting a tree, which is really, really good. I mean, they all need to know how our food sources are grown. But when you talk about a bank, especially with kids who've never heard about a bank, and you give them that little deposit book, and they come and deposit as little as a penny, and we encourage depositing. It's not the dollar amount. It's not the cent amount. It's the habit of saving. And they're so excited to come to make that one deposit and get a sticker, and then ask them what they've learned about financial literacy, and they'll tell you, well, saving is important. And we learn pay yourself first. They know that PYF. And we have one student that made a song for pay yourself first. You are establishing good positive habits when it comes to financial literacy. It's a life skill that needs to be learned. And my philosophy is that if you give a child a foundation, they will always go back to it. And I like the fact that the families learn something by the kids being educated through Anson good for everybody. Sonia Anderson with Anson, the charity that you founded in 2009. You guys are going to be up on 10 years before you know it. We are. And we started with 166 students in February 2010 and to have served over 68,000 students and growing. It's not what anyone had imagined. And now that you have expanded beyond even the Clark County School District, those numbers of kids served are going to go up big time. It will. Yes. Sonia, am I forgetting anything? Our golf tournament, please go on our website. Website, help us grow that tournament. Even if you're not a golfer and you work for an organization or a company that can buy a team, sponsor a team, or be one of our sponsors in another way other than sending golfers out on that day, we'd appreciate that. And then in September, our Sharpen Your Senses event, which is pairings. We not only are educating the kids about financial literacy and homework help and tutoring, on that day, we educate the adults about pairing different types of libations and beverages with food. Also important, just saying. Yes. It is Anson 501c3 Charity working to educate our kids when it comes to financial matters, and it's so important. Sonia Anderson, you have become quite the speaker. I think you've been out doing this a little bit since I first met you a couple years back. Uh, Yes. (laughs) You spread the word beautifully for Anson. I love it when we have someone in studio who really is making a difference in Southern Nevada and you're seeing big results and big rewards. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us again on Talking Solutions. Thank you for having me back. Talking Solutions is a production of the Community Relations Department here at Beasley Media Group Las Vegas. Get more information on today's topic on our Talking Solutions page on Facebook, where you will also find links and a podcast of today's show. Thanks for listening and have a great week.